Hi, uh, I'm Tom from Sequential Artists Workshop. And I'm Justine from the Sequential Artists Workshop. And yeah. go ahead. <laughs> we're um, looking at Pete Craig Russell's Strange Dreams from IDW, which just came out. Yeah, and we're going to talk about just a few pages in here. Um, this is kind of an interestingly personal one for me because uh, Craig was the first person to mentor me. Um, we've had a bit of a following out, falling out over the years, which I would like to repair. I might talk about that briefly, just in case Craig's listening. <laughs> we, you know, at some point maybe. And um, I picked this image to start with just because it was so nice and big and bold. And it has a, a sort of exemplary of what Craig does in so many ways. Um, I think Craig's known for doing very sort of tight, methodical work. All, you know, there's nothing... Largely, you don't think about Craig Russell and think of loose, but we're going to see... Uh, examples later where that's actually not true. He can be quite loose, but he has these very, um, very sort of fussy, rhythmic, uh, always perfect lines. Everything is exactly where he wants it. And interesting thing about this is having known Craig and learned from Craig, um, he composes images like an opera. You know, this isn't blues. There's no looseness. The, the timing isn't, you know, there's no move, you know, there's no sloppiness in the timing or anything. Everything is really perfectly composed. So, and he lived that way too. His kitchen looked like that. His <laughs> studio looked like that. He appeared that way. The music he loved was that way. That he, Everything was very consistent uh, as far as Craig goes. And um, that's in no way to make fun of him. It was actually really beautiful. I mean, the work's clean. His life was clean. Anyway, um, but, you know, I, I just learned so much from Craig about just using line weight to define uh, shape and volume and, and, and space. Because I always say in my classes that um, inking defines uh, light, weight, volume, space, and it creates hierarchy. You know, for example, you know, this sword really pops because it's black and white. It, it just vibrates. It's simple black and white. So that poor sword comes forward. There's no details on it. The simple black and white on top of all these details is what really, I think, makes that sword pop forward. Tom? I was just going to comment uh, as for the, uh, you know, the deliberateness of everything. As silly as it is, all of these stars are perfectly horizontal. You know, this isn't like a smattering of stars to give you some sort of cosmic coolness. It's really part of the graphic design. Everything is um, just really aligned with itself. You know, and that's one thing I've always yeah. noticed about Craig is there's a... It's, it's not a coldness, but it's a deliberateness of every single line, not just... No, it's, it's too passionate to be cold. Yeah. Um, even back here, uh, a lot of artists at the time were using toothbrushes to spatter the white stars down. And you can tell when looking at these that Craig was trying to mimic the look of spattered stars. But having done it both ways, I can tell that he deliberately placed these stars. You know, there's just there's rhythm to it that kind of give it away. They aren't splattered. They're deliberately placed. Um, I think that would be you know, maybe the best word to describe Craig Russell as deliberate. Um, I think we're going to look at this image here first. Um, only because it kind of uh, immediately, it actually looks, you know, there's a lot of action in it, a lot of motion, a lot of intensity. It doesn't have that kind of stoic, operatic look that I think, I think we, you know, we think of Craig in that way. But when you look at the work, you know, like any great artist, he's not a one-trick pony, right? And you get into these zigzags and these little, these little scrapey lines here. And what you start seeing in these zigzags down here is that it's really not, you know, tightly deliberate. It's deliberately thought through, but he, there's a looseness to his hand when the, when the lines are applied. You can watch a really tight guitar player and the same thing happens. Um, they might be playing something musically very tight, but their hands are moving like rubber. You know, there's a looseness in the way it's delivered. And then, you know, he really gets the intensity here. But this sort of is like a hallmark of Russell's style, mm -hmm. is this minimal amount of hatching. You know, he's got the straight lines and then a few hatching coming through it. Um, I learned a lot from Craig. I haven't talked to Craig in a very long time which is really, really sad because um, I really miss Craig. But the truth is we had a bit of a falling out, I think because when I first met Craig, I was really young. And uh, we're going to move over here too. And um, I was also coming out of a fundamentalist Christian background. And, you know, I, I was learning a lot at the time. And I probably said some pretty offensive to things to Craig, you know, because of uh, his personal life and my background being so different. So, Craig, if you're out there, um, you know, we all change. We all we all move forward, so um, I'd love to talk to you again. Anyway, um, you know, looking at this great face, it's so uh, it's so deliberate, but it's also full of life. You know, it doesn't look stiff. I mean, he's deliberate without ever being stiff. He's tight without being stiff. And this one doesn't have the zigzag things on it so much as the previous one did, but 
I love this, you know, how he's got this one layer of shading here, another layer of shading here, another layer of shading here. And um, he does that a lot too, where he uses really thick lines and then medium lines and then thinner lines, you know, to create, you know, sort of, uh, I call them groupings. You know, there's like a grouping here and a grouping here. I can tell that his hand probably moved in one swift motion here and another motion here and another motion here. These were probably all drawn in one move, you know, without moving the elbow again or whatever. And then here and here, or moving the shoulder. Well, always moving the shoulder, but it feels like some of these lines when you're drawing them, you know, you don't do them all in one go. You don't do them three at a time. You know, when you're really in a rhythm, you, you kind of, these little blocks of lines kind of happen, right? But when you get really good at it, it starts to look seamless. But when I look at it, I can start to see the little groupings. Tom, did you have anything to add? You answered all my questions about that when you started talking about the groupings and the rhythm. Yeah, I yeah. I was really interested in that. Uh, that's something I try to teach a lot in my classes. And that's why in a lot of my inking classes, online or in person, there's a lot of redundancy to it because um, if you if there's no redundancy to it, um, you're not getting the rhythm. You're not getting the repetition that you need. I think I pick this one more than anything because if I'm not mistaken, that's Jill Thompson, who I think we all know and later went on to become quite popular in her own right. And, um, and she penciled The Invisibles, the first five issues, and I inked her on those. And I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure that's Jill. Um, if Craig and Jill are out there, they can correct me if I'm wrong, but it sure does look like her quite a bit. Um, Craig used a lot of live models, not live models, he would take photographs and they would pop up, the models would pop up in various books, you know, even beyond the one he was using. But, you know, here we have that again with the hatching. You've got these lines going this way, these lines going this way, and then these lines going horizontally across the face. And then this just perfectly Mm -hmm. All these lines in perfect rhythm, all the way down, all done with a, a 108, Hunt 108 nib. So that's what you're really seeing here is it's, it's not a brush, and it's not the 102, which most of us were using then, it's a 108. What makes the 108 interesting is the 108, uh, unlike the, it's like a, the, it's like that weird space between a brush and a pen, because the 108 is a little longer, and it has more of a feel of a brush, it's, you know, because I've, I've tried the 108s before. And I, I don't know if he's still using them because it's been so long, but he probably is. This is so Craig, too. Just the fluidity of all this down through. And then this hair, which, you know, I know Craig was a fan of Art Nouveau and Mooka. And, you know, what this shows here is some of that, you know, the Mooka knowledge of how to use hair to create design by repeating these curves. But it doesn't look like Mooka. Here again, you know, these two repeating curves are very mooka like these yeah, repeating curves are very mooka like but it doesn't look like mooka and this is why i tell my students you know when you're learning just copy what you love um because eventually you'll find your own way to do it that no longer looks like a second rate mooka or something else this doesn't look like second rate mooka it looks like p craig russell that a learned eye can figure out you know that's where mooka came from here interestingly enough we talked about the loose zigzags earlier look at how deliberate and tight those zigzags are so that's the thing about even the zigzags in Russell's work. Um, they're not always, they're not one dimensional. They're not all loose. They're not all tight and deliberate. Um, it just, you know, my question would be to Craig if I were to seeing him, him again is, you know, do you know when you're being loose or tight on this? Is it intentional or is it just how you feel on that day? And that's one of the interesting things about inking is a lot of it is intuitive and instinctive. And, you know, that's why I say learn as much as you can, master all these rhythms, do all the boring stuff. Because once you do that, then you have the flexibility to tighten up on these zigzags or to go loose on the zigzags. Great, Tom, do you have anything great. to add? Well, I was curious about the the contrast that he's creating that br pops these eyes out. Look, you have this like row of black yeah, that yeah, are sort yeah. of that the eyes are sitting upon this, this, and this. I mean, it's just so conscious and it's just so powerful. Well, it makes those eyes really come. It's forward. even more conscious than that because not only do you have this going through here, mm -hmm. you know, it connects with the eyes, connects with the nose, but then it's balanced out mm -hmm. by the black down here. What I try to tell my students about spotting blacks is imagine if these blacks were gone. What would happen to that image? Right, it'd float up a little. Which now, as far as the consciousness goes, if you pull back just a little bit so you can see all three of these panels, um, including this one on the left, what you'll notice is that the blacks are distributed evenly across the panel in this arc, all the way across the bottom mm -hmm. of the page. And that is something I think I subconsciously learned from Craig. He never really taught me that. But, you know, I don't just think of the composition on the panel. I think about how the entire how it affects, you know, the entire tier of panels or the entire page because the eye really flows through these blacks right across in this uh, subtle downward angle. 
And so that's not really about inking, but it's still valuable information about drawing, right? <laughs> um, this one I'm sharing, I think, because uh, originally I wanted to talk about these zigzags, which we've already discussed. See how loose those are in comparison to the previous page? And look down here. They aren't even the same weight. I mean, those are really loose. Here he's starting to look more like Al Williamson. And just for fun, let's just go back, because they're right back on top of each other. Oh, wow, I lost the sticky on that. Anyway, uh, but you saw the tighter zigzags earlier. And then um, what you've got here is this great bit of, uh, you know, hatching he does. And then this thing here, where he does these sort of rain-like descending or sometimes horizontal lines to create shadows. You know, my instinct would have been to put cast that into black. But Craig instead puts these really interesting lines in here. I would never make that choice um, because it suits Craig. It doesn't suit me, you know? It's beautiful when Craig does it. But these are just the choices that are available to you. You know, over here you want with solid black and yeah, up here too. So you've got this black coming down here and then you've got black balanced mm -hmm. down this side as well. Tom, what have I missed? Oh, <laughs> the design itself is just so, um, it's so elegant. It's got that Art Nouveau, those Art Nouveau curves and the symmetry of the way the two characters are sort of breaking into each other's space just a little bit but not entirely it's really lovely that's got nothing to do with inking no i'm just teasing you <laughs> down here look at this here on this rock you know look how loose some of this gets mm -hmm. you know i mean this is uh really craig having a really good day being loose and being you know having a lot of fun with it I love and, that uh, kind of inking yeah nice rocks. those are great i, I get think lost in that kind of stuff we've got one more page to look mm -hmm. at and i think what kind of impressed me about this was craig taking these rhythmic lines he does and using to create cross contour and a sense of volume. And the cross contour, you'll notice, doesn't have to go all the way across the form. You know, your mind fills in the volume of that because these lines, even though they're the one, two, three, there's four different little sections of them, you know, your, your eye sees the whole barrel shape of that chest and sees the whole barrel shape of this chest, even though they're broken. And, you know, here we've got one set of cross contour lines and then a slightly heavier set on top that are actually um, not quite as tight as Craig usually does. Those are, you know, kind of chunky, funky little marks. They're great, you know, that's not a... None of this is a judgment, because I have nothing but praise for anything, you know, Craig does. I think I think we all kind of feel that way. And then we've got the cross contour going here, and the cross contour going here, mixed with these zigzags, which are, again, you know, pretty loose, really. Um, the reason I picked this one is because this may have come out just when or just after I met Craig, so it was already very aware of this image and um, from the work I think it was Busema and Rudy Nebris, I could be mistaken, who um, you know brought these characters to life uh, in, I can't remember the name of the book now, but anyway, all you comic fans out there will correct me on that. Look at this distribu distribution of solid blacks. You've got this great arc across here, you've got this other bit of balance across here, and then you've got this across the bottom. So everything is in perfect balance, one big shape, one small shape bunch of small, three small shapes going across here, and then you've got this over here. It just creates a nice sense of rhythm and flow, and then also his use of white. It's one of the things I learned from, oddly enough, Jeff Jones and not Russell, was Jeff Jones said to me at one point, you spot blacks well, but where's the white? And um, you'd think I would have picked that up from Craig, because Craig uses the spot of blacks really well, and then he also uses the negative space of the white really well. Tom? Oh, just noticing how deliberate, again, his, his work is. Like, notice this. It's not... A, a chaotic ripple. It's not even a natural ripple. It's a perfect ellipsis within an ellipsis. You know, it's just this yeah. design. It looks like a record. It's I was just going to so say that. It looks like elegant, a record. So elegant, right? Um, and, and design and elegance is what I think Craig Russell's work has oh, always been about. Definitely. And it, a large part is that, you know, his, his obsession with opera and classical mm. music. As Craig used to say, um, whenever he had someone over that he wanted to get rid of, he'd put on a screeching Wagnerian opera to drive them out of the house. <laughs> Um, so it's just kind of a funny story. So if you're out there, Craig, I'd love to talk to you again. This is Miss um, Anderson, Justine Mara Anderson from the Sequential Artist Workshop. And uh, I teach uh, inking classes and, and so on here. And Tom might want to say more about that briefly, but I think we're about done. Yep, your inking classes are linked in the uh, down below and offer your comments. We want to hear them, but check out Justine's amazing inking classes. Yeah, thank you.